In this short video, we're going to look at factoring polynomials that come from special products. Remember, we had two types of special products that we studied. One was the uh, square of a binomial, and the other was the product of conjugates. So when working with these types of problems, it's going to be really useful to uh, memorize the squares of the counting numbers up to at least 15 squared. You probably already know 1 through 10, so 11 and 12 you may know as well. 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, 14 squared you just swap the 6 and the 9, so it's 196, and 15 squared is 225. Just as an aside, some fun facts. Uh, if you take 111 squared, you get 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. If you take 1,111 squared, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nice, easy thing to remember. And then if 12 squared is 144, another one easy to remember is that 21 squared is 441. You, you've reversed the digits in what you're scare, squaring, and then you've reversed the digits in the answer. All right, so let's get into some factoring. Here I have a trinomial. And what do I know which will make me think that this could be possibly the square of a binomial? Well, first of all, there's some pretty big numbers. And uh, so 144, there's 120. And the first term so the squared term, or the quadratic term, is a perfect square, and the constant term is a perfect square. Now, you may be wondering, why did I put negative 5 here for the square of the constant term? It's because I see that there's a negative 120, and so that would tell me that the uh, second term, if I'm squaring the binomial, should be a negative term, so negative 5. Now, <clears throat> we can't just automatically conclude that this is the square of a binomial. We have to check that linear term, the middle term. Remember, it should be twice the product of both terms, so twice the product of 12m and negative 5. So let's check that. If I take twice 12m times negative 5, I get, well, 2 times negative 60m, which is negative 120m. And that's what I have in my original polynomial. So this is the square of a binomial. And the terms inside the binomial are 12m and negative 5. Now here, it's e easier to see if you have a polynomial, which might be the product of conjugates. Again, you have big numbers. You don't always have big numbers. Um, but there's only two terms. That's a big clue. Uh, you've got subtraction, and each term is a perfect square. So if you have the difference of two squares, uh, then it is the product of conjugates. So let's go ahead and factor that out. It'll be 9p plus 8 times 9p minus 8, of course. Order of multiplication doesn't matter, so I could have also written this as 9p minus 8 coming first, and then 9p plus 8. It does not matter. All right, so here we have three terms. I see some big numbers, and I see that the quadratic term and the constant term are perfect squares. So let's just check. We have to check to see if I take twice 10y times 3, will I get 60y? And sure enough, I do. So this is the square of a binomial. And the terms inside the binomial are 10y plus 3. So we'll have quantity 10y plus 3 squared as the factorization. All right. Here I have only two terms. There is subtraction. But neither of these terms is a perfect square. However, 
there is a common factor, a common factor of 2. So after I take out the common factor of 2, what I have left inside the parentheses is indeed the difference of 2 squares. And so I have to keep the common factor of 2, but then I can write the factorization as 7a plus 2b times 7a minus 2b. All right, so again, I really want to caution you. You have to check that linear term. And here's an example where we can get into trouble. Here we have three terms and got some big numbers. So all of the clues would say that this might be the square of a binomial. In fact, the first term is a perfect square and the last term, the constant term, is a perfect square. But when I check twice the product of those terms, what I get is negative 60x. What I have is, uh, so I have negative 65. Huh. I wanted a bigger line. Oh. Oops, that was not what I wanted. have is negative 60. So there's no match there. Uh, so uh, you know, does that mean that you can't factor this? You know, no, that's not true. It just tells us that it's not the square of a binomial. We don't know yet. We will learn in a future video how to factor this polynomial. In fact, you can factor it and we'll see in a future video. Alright, so in summary, a trinomial may be the square of a binomial if the first term and the constant term, so the quadratic term and the constant term are perfect squares, but you have to check that linear term. And a binomial is the product of conjugate if it's the difference of two squares, and of course we have to look for a common factor before we do anything else.